Wait for some flavels, okay. Hello everyone. Welcome to Harvard. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Did you guys know that you were going to be pre-med before coming into Harvard? Yeah. yeah. Kind of explain. You get, you get to start it, Hillary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I always knew that I was going to be pre-med. The first thing that I knew that I wanted to do something in the science field was when I dissected a goat eyeball. A goat eyeball? Yeah. Holy crap. Wait, how do you even dissect that? I don't know. They gave it to us in third grade and we were like, okay. Third grade? Dang. I was out of camp. Whoa. Yeah. I kind of always had a feeling that I was going to be pre-med. You know, I feel like there was always that some kind of like Asian parent expectation, you know, they want their kids to be like doctors and shit. Like a lifestyle that's a bit more focused on, you know, helping other people and being able to really apply that kind of like learning that you do. And I think that's something that would be really fun to dedicate your life to, but it's also something that's like valuable to society. I um, mean, yeah, same here. Like um, I've been pretty set on pre-med since middle school. And I think a big factor is um, I have an uncle who studied in like neurology mm -hmm. so that, and he's also a doctor. So that really ignited the spark, I guess you could say. It really solidified for me when I went to a UCI summer surgery camp over the oh, summer. True. And we got to like dissect uh, fetal pigs and uh, learn how to suture and do like laparoscopy. I actually wanted to be a fashion designer, <laughs> like which is like, yeah, a fashion designer. Yeah. designer. And then that transitioned into being a vet because <laughs> not, not my name, but a veterinarian. <laughs> I, I grew to really love animals and um, especially dogs. So then I was like, oh, maybe I'll be a, a veterinarian. But then, um, you know, from that transition to being, um, I guess, a doctor. So yeah. You got the whole progression from like- I got the whole progression, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My road is like a lot yeah. like weirder. Okay, so I, I started off, you know, like when you were younger, it was, you always had like those three choices of either being like, a doctor, an astronaut, or like a policeman. Mm, yeah. Firefighter was like thrown in there too sometimes. Mm -hmm. So I thought I was gonna be like a paleontologist oh, and everything. Okay. But then you that, knew that word? Yeah, I did oh. know that word. I started looking to like, oh, what is like a life of paleontologist like? Bones actually like, they don't look like they do in the museum. It's just like a little rock in the ground. And they're like, oh my God, I think it's a thigh or something. I can't believe you actually thought about income. No, I started I off being like, wanting to be a bus driver. <laughs> I'm not even so cute. Bus driver? That's really cute. Driver. I was like five and I, I had a whole plan with my friend. She was gonna like stand on the bus while I drove and then we would switch. How has being at Harvard changed your perspective about either pre-med or medicine? Who would like to go first? <laughs> no, I think you go first. Yeah. Okay, well, Harvard has just kind of, I would like boost, is boosted the right word? Like reinforce that i would say yeah yeah like learning like ls1a like life sciences <laughs> um physical physical sciences ps11 <laughs> like all that stuff it's really cool and just having this like pre-med community here it's really nice like my friend group is basically all pre-med so i mean nothing wrong with that it's really great and we uh, really help each other and we really support each other through our journey so i think that's like really cool to have that kind of support I think mine's a little bit different. It's okay. actually just kind of like touching on the community part of it. Like, mm -hmm. I think I have a lot of pre-med friends, right? Mm -hmm. But I feel like so many of like my other people that I hang out with like every day are actually not pre-meds. Mm -hmm. Like my blocking group, I'm the only like life science in there. So like when I hang out with them, when I eat dinner with them every day, right? It's like, like I, I was stressed for my midterms for like my like pre-med classes, like Chem 17 and all that <laughs> stuff. And now they're stressed for their like statistics classes, like Stat 110 and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. but like, Half the campus is stressed about that one time, honestly, but yeah. It's a nice but, break, right? Yeah, it's a nice break. It's and nice I think break. like being able to talk to them is like, it puts a lot of like the things I do into like perspective a little too. Mm -hmm. Cause like, I feel like, see like alongside like being like in like a lot of these groups, like I think it's good to know like there's other people out there who are doing something different. And honestly, it's made me question pre-med a little sometimes. Mm -hmm. Like when I talk to my roommate about like, his career path versus mine, like sometimes what I think about a lot is, oh my God, by the time he has like a job and is like settled down and everything, I could still be in like med school <laughs> or right about a good grinding. Out of med <laughs> yeah. It just like yeah. that thought like changes it a little, but honestly, no, I think I agree with you. Like, there's a wonderful pre med community here at Harvard. Mm -hmm. but I think also just being in a place like this, you meet so many other people who have so many different passions and fields as well. So, yeah. I think that studying the classes have also like taught me a lot more about different fields in the health like field that aren't only like going to become a doctor. Mm. So last year I had the chance to consider a lot of different options <laughs> mm. um, like optometry, pharmacy, because I used to work in a pharmacy. I always like knew I was interested in drugs. So like different like capacities <laughs> of like health. I think that it's taught me a lot about that. Is it always still kind of been bio or you ever thought like I'm going to do like a full 180? 
go to humanities or something. Yeah, yeah. I have thought about it. But, <laughs> but I think it was always like health for me. I was I was gonna apply to be a biomedical engineering like really? major here. Oh. Yeah. But then I was like, I cannot do uh, physics. <laughs> yeah. And also like um, the the double EE class, electrical mm -hmm. engineering mm -hmm. class scares me. I do think there is a strong subset of Harvard's pre-meds who are not like pre-meds coming to Richmond though. Like we might not see them as much because uh -huh. a lot of them are usually like juniors or older, like who are like maybe not in the same classes or just like, I don't see them as much, mm -hmm. but they're like all pre-meds and they later decided yeah. they were going to be pre-med. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's really common too. Yeah, I've met yeah. a lot of juniors even in my like freshman classes. So, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So it's never too late to be pre-med. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. The path is hard and long regardless. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I always thought that pre-med was like going straight through undergrad, going into medical school. Mm -hmm. But like there's been so many people that I've just heard stories from like that take gap years or like multiple gap years or like mm -hmm. do a master's and then take more gap years and then go to medical school. And I think that's really interesting and something I haven't really like thought of before. Why are you passionate about medicine, guys? Sure, so that would be on our med school app. Yeah, 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 yeah. that would be a yeah. question. It is, it's, it's, it's literally like the obvious like, it's like, why do you want to be a doctor? Why do you want to be a doctor? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, like the standard common app essay. But yeah, why, why are you guys passionate about medicine? <laughs> <laughs> this, you take this, you take okay. this. I, I have to think, I have to think. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So hard. Um, I think a big thing that I mentioned before also was the rare disease portion. So like in my essay, I also talked about that. I know someone who experienced that, that I was really close to. Mm -hmm. um, and there's just not many resources in Canada. I feel like the U.S. has a lot more research and like mm -hmm. it's just very different. The person who I know who was also impacted was a child. Um, so I love pediatrics and I want to do something like that in the future. I honestly still don't really know the answer to that. And I feel like okay. I, I was stressed actually first year. I was really stressed. I was really stressed about knowing that answer. Because oh, mm -hmm. I feel like once you get to the place like this, like, I, like we said before, like just people to do so many different things, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, yeah. So then you feel like there's a little bit of pressure to have to like figure out that path to know that answer. Because everyone is so passionate. You're like, why am I not so passionate? Mm -hmm. So there's a little bit of like a struggle there. But then like, I remember talking to the doctor and like he was telling me, he's, he's like, you don't have to have an answer. He's just, it's like, it's like, the, he's, it's like, when you're trying to build an answer right now, it's like all these things, it's, it's like, it's going to change. Mm -hmm. He's like, it's undoubtedly yeah. going to change. He's like, like, you can know what you're going to be now, but two to three years, you're going to go through new experiences. College is a life changing time. So like, I would say for the people who are like, maybe like more like me, who aren't too sure about why they're so passionate about medicine. I think you kind of have to trust the process, trust the journey mm -hmm. and kind of like go into it just with a curiosity to be willing to find out. I guess like what makes me passionate about medicine is I'm a twin, <laughs> Wow, <laughs> but my twin, she, she had to get brain surgery because she had like a drooping cerebellum. So we had to like, they had to like fix it back up. So, and I think I'm um, just watching, you know, her go through that and like, I guess, like the days leading up to it, I've realized, you know, mm -hmm. like how scary surgery can be. Mm -hmm. We're like, and I'm not even the one being operated on, just like my family members. Like the patient can really impact like the family as well. And I feel like, you know, as someone who can be a doctor, we can like at least try and help relieve some of that and, you know, really empathize with these, you know, these, these families. But also I've had like a lot of teachers like just pass away suddenly. Oh. So yeah, so I feel like, I feel like for me, I would really like to improve on just looking, being able to like, you know, look at someone and just kind of getting a sense of, okay, what's gonna happen, right? How are they doing like uh, health wise? And so, yeah, I think that's like part of the big reasons why I want to do medicine. Mm -hmm. You're gonna yeah. make a great doctor, is that? <laughs> better, I better do better hope so. Than no, I do hope figure, so. Yeah. Tell us about your lab experience recently. My lab experience? Lab experience recently, yeah. <laughs> oh my god, actually yeah, yeah. this is so funny because um, as you can see my finger is, is currently patched up but I went into lab last Wednesday and I work on a cryostat so it's like a machine and so I was setting up the <laughs> the machine and I was putting the brain on the, I was like mounting it and um, my finger slipped and so it like got slashed by the blade um, so I am currently still recovering from it but you know, um, other than that, I think <laughs> uh, research is a really cool experience. Please be careful if you're working with knives yeah. or this blades. This is what it means to be pre -med. This is what it means to be pre guys. Yeah. I wear the yeah. scars on my hand. Um, so I'm doing kind of a data analysis qualitative study on neurofibromatosis type two, which is a rare disease. Um, and basically there's like tumors that are like spreading in your like nervous system. 
Um, so I think it's really cool. I've had a chance to like meet the patients, meet the doctors behind that. I've been like to symposiums and that kind of stuff. Um, but right now we're like looking into the effects of one of the drugs on neurohypertensive disease type two, on the different types of tumors. So yeah, so right now I'm just kind of analyzing all that data that we collected last year. Mm. I did not know you did that. Yeah. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I feel like nobody you talking about it though, yeah. You can't, blame me, you can't blame me. So my lab has actually primarily been like in the summer. We study bacteria that cause diarrhea and how they spread basically. Okay. My PI will kill me for describing it like that. But that, that is like the simplified version. For me, I'm a big bacteria guy. Mm -hmm. I, I enjoy that work. Mm -hmm. I think those little boys are wonderful. Like my own children. I don't I don't know where I'm going with this, but yeah. Bacteria but no. dad. I'm a bacteria dad. <laughs> yeah, this is yeah. weird. I'm like a shirt. This is like weird. Number one bacteria dad. Oh my god. None of that eukaryotic nonsense. You know, it's like, you know, it's like sugar daddy, yeah. bacteria daddy. daddy. <laughs> Doing research is probably one of the most rewarding experiences since yeah. I've been here. Yeah. I mm. think you're like, you have some tough days, you have some, have some good tough days. days. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have any advice for aspiring pre meds? Three, two, one. Prepare, Prepare to, to be, be challenged. challenged. <laughs> I guess we should probably elaborate okay. now. Okay, okay, okay. We could elaborate. We could elaborate. We could elaborate. I think like coming in as pre med sometimes like I feel like you know like say if you're a high schooler right you're really well acquainted with the college application process mm -hmm. and you really understand oh I need to take the SAT I need to take the ACT or whatever do my AP test write these essays get those teacher recs in basically kind of going on with the pre med track is like that but then you intensify by so much. There's a reason that like people take gaps, that people have to take years like away because it's not like it's anything bad because the process shouldn't be rushed, but they do it because it's such a hard process to fit in within like four years. It's really gonna be a wonderful time. Like, are we having a wonderful time? Right now we are, we just finished our game chemistry. Oh my God. Yeah, we just yeah. finished our game. Yeah. 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 You guys caught us on a good yeah. You got a good yeah. wave. Yeah. You're gonna face the times like where you're gonna be really challenged in terms of what you're doing. You're gonna have to basically find that you might not think you're smart enough. You might not think there's literally enough hours in the day. Like it's like, I remember laying out my schedule. I'm like, this is not chronologically possible. This is not even about me being smart enough or like humans. And there's not enough hours. Like I did the math, it's like, I would need to be like Hermione Granger with a oh, time, the time, the time turner, yeah. Coming in like as a uh, freshman, I guess, um, like I was kind of not ready for the academic rigor here. Obviously it's gonna take some time for you to kind of get used to it, but I think once you do, I think it's actually very uh, a rewarding experience once you, you know, uh, like you study and you learn, right? And all that is still equally as important for you to you know, just branch out to other areas, like, you know, join an orchestra here or join a dance troupe. Like, I'm in a dance troupe. Did you guys write about wanting to be a doctor when you applied to college? Oh, that's Ooh. a good question. Um, Not for my Common App essay, but definitely for like an additional Harvard prompt, I wrote about it, yeah. Mm -hmm. My, yeah, my Harvard prompt, I don't think I mentioned directly that I was gonna be a doctor, but I talked about having a family member who has underwent brain surgery. So I talked a little bit about that and like the impact it had on my family, so. Yeah, what about you guys? <laughs> like, I actually didn't like touch on it at all. Almost, really? In any of my applications. Like it was like, I was like, I was, I talked about biology and like mm -hmm. the sciences and all that stuff. Okay. But there's almost no mention that it's like, I want to go into medicine. I want to be able to like be a doctor. I think the only essay I remember where like, I kind of talked about it was actually like, like I think it was, it was one of the Yale essays. <laughs> oh, it was actually an essay for oh Yale. Yale. Yeah. <laughs> it was actually a really well written essay. Really? Because uh, you know how like they do like the really short essay prompts? Mm. Did you get it? Uh, yes, I did. But, you know, I, th I think I made the right choice. I made the right choice. <laughs> yeah. Like when I was applying to college, just in general, I didn't have any like very pre-med activities. Like I did mm -hmm. like cello a lot. I, and um, I was like part of like my school's Navy program, like a military program. So like nothing related to medicine. But I think it's important as long as you know why you want to do medicine or like why you want to be in the medical field, like you have that kind of drive or that passion. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, colleges will still be able to see that.